I remember there was an occasion when I, I was told as a child that because of my parents and because of the family that I come from, that I really shouldn't try to pursue anything higher than, than a high school education, that I should just go out and find a job. Um, and again, all, all of those things, however, they served as, as, as motivators. My name is uh, Kellan Bubb and um, I'm originally a broadcast journalist uh, from the island of Grenada. I grew up in uh, two parts of the island. I had a rural and an urban uh, childhood, uh, having grown up in uh, the, the, the communities of Pomeroes and Crochu in St. David's and St. Andrews, uh, as well as uh, Grenville Street slash Four Road slash Williamson Road uh, in the town of St. George. Um, Essentially, my life is, again, a quintessential uh, island boy uh, life, pretty much. Um, and like many other kids of my time, uh, I did have challenges, uh, you know, while I was growing up as a child. I do remember fondly, for example, um, having, to, having to wear two shirts, uh, both in high school and in, in elementary school. When I got home from school, I had to, to head to, to, to the laundry, which of course was not a washing machine for us at the time. Um, you head to the sink, you wash your shirt, uh, and uh, you put it away for the next day. Uh, similarly, I had two shoes, two pairs of shoes. Um, there was one shoes, especially when I grew up in, in Pomeroes, there was one shoes for, that would take you through the mud track when you got out of the mud, the, the mud paths, uh, then you would wear your other shoes um, in order to go to school. Uh, so I, I do remember those times, but I remember when I grew up, uh, there was the expectation that if you, if you came from a particular family, um, that your, your lot in life uh, would would be representative of, 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 of that particular family's uh, economic circumstances and social status. The economic challenges that I experienced as a child, I believe it, it would have informed um, the direction that I eventually took in life. Um, and so I attended the Presentation College in Grenada um, and I, I, I am also currently the president of the Presentation College Alumni Association here in New York. Um, it's something that I, I, I am very proud of, proud of the fact that I attended an institution uh, that has given me so much that uh, essentially set a, a very important foundation for me. Um, and I think many times we take for granted uh, the public education we receive in the Caribbean. But again, its currency and its value is manifested when, for example, we, we, you know, we migrate and we, we travel and you know, we live and work in, in spaces like North America and Europe, uh, where we see that value. So uh, my time at Presentation College was, uh, was punctuated um, by a lot of economic challenges, uh, but it was punctuated by a very solid and an important um, uh, educational uh, foundation. Some of my fondest memories uh, surround, uh, you know, going to the market, going to the market square with my grandmother on a Saturday morning, um, and also uh, going to the mountain, as we called it back then, uh, to, to, to again engage in the agriculture and, and, and the harvesting of, 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 of nutmegs and, and bananas and other root crops. Uh, children now, you know, we live in a social media age where everyone is concerned with likes and not concerned with enjoying the, the environment around them. Um, I remember, uh, you know, as a child in Pomeroes, for example, um, you know, going to, to, to hunt, uh, you know, fish for crayfish in the river, um, accompanying my mom um, to, to the river to wash clothes um, on a Sunday after church and so on. Flying kites uh, around Easter, um, that was a favorite pastime of mine. 
um, I, I got a lot of licks for, for, <laughs> for, for defying curfews because I would be out with my friends uh, making kites and, you know, flying kites way past the evening, you know, way, way past uh, daylight hours sometimes. I recently got accepted into Howard University. Uh, it is one of the preeminent institutions for uh, black scholarly research in the United States. It's in fact a historically black uh, college and university. So at Howard University, I'll be pursuing a, a PhD in, in, in communication, uh, more specifically uh, risk communication and climate change communication. I was fortunate enough to be uh, a group of only Grenadians uh, to attend school in the Republic of China on Taiwan at the time. While in Taiwan, I was able to uh, acquire uh, Mandarin Chinese um, because you, you, you were required to study the language in order to begin your undergraduate studies uh, in that country. Um, so I'm currently a fluent speaker of Mandarin. Um, but I also pursued an international communication degree in Ming Chuan University in Taipei. As a matter of fact, uh, I was one of only four black students in, in a class of, of mostly Chinese and, 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 and uh, Caucasian, Caucasians, pretty much. Um, so that was an experience in itself. Um, perhaps uh, in Taiwan was the first place I really experienced racism. Um, and, and, and my color became, uh, for, I, I became very conscious of my color because of that racism that I experienced. Um, but all in all, I, I would say that it, it was a, an eye-opening experience. Um, it was an experience that I would have never acquired if I had migrated to North America initially. Um, having to learn a different language, having to understand the cultural nuances of an Asian culture, having to understand the history of that culture, um, and also having the opportunity to, to engage uh, you know, some of my Asian counterparts on, on, on knowledge of black history, on knowledge of Caribbean history, because they have no familiarity, as much familiarity with, with the Caribbean as they would with blacks in North America. So, uh, so for me, it, it was uh, uh, that, when you talk about cultural exchanges, cultural and academic exchanges, that was an experience um, that was so rich and so valuable because of the things it taught me and because of the things it taught my host country. One of my favorite memories of Grenada as a child um, was really high school, uh, attending Presentation College and, uh, you know, attending the Intercall Games. Uh, in, the in the original Queen's Park before there was uh, a national stadium. I guess I'm giving away my age now. But, <laughs> um, you know, those two days of intercall, uh, outside of the athletic rivalry that existed on the field, which was also grass at the time, this was not a synthetic track, but um, I remember fondly, uh, you know, getting on those bleachers with with my buddies and with, you know, with my sister in from the St. Joseph's Convent in St. George's. And, you know, it, it, will be, it will be a jump up from the time you get there to the time you leave. But there was one year in particular, I think that was the last year that Intercall um, what, what was held at the, the, the Queen's Park. That was before um, they, they demolished uh, that, that, that old structure to make way for the National Stadium, the original National Stadium. I remember that one year that there was a chant uh, to break down the bleachers. Um, and I remember <laughs> we left Queen's Park that Thursday, because at that time Intercall was on a Wednesday and a Thursday. We left Queen's Park uh, having broken down uh, those bleachers on, 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 on the western part of, of the pavilion. So um, that was, for me, um, one, one thing that I really look forward to, uh, the Intercall Games. As an adult, I really, really enjoyed Carnival. I really, really enjoyed Carnival, especially Dimash Gras. Uh, 
going to the Masgara and then having gone from the Masgara to attend Juve the next, the next morning, the following morning. My name is Kellen Bubb and this is my oil down story.